First of all, one of the major mechanisms of pollution is what we eat. But the problem is, we're not sure what that pollution is. There's a lot of confusion that surrounds diet and what constitutes pollution and what constitutes health. And that's what I really want to talk about. One of the sources of, of confusion, I think, is illustrated by a recent study that was published all over the world, actually, which indicated that in the United States, populations with the lowest income actually had the longest lifespan. That's very surprising. Nobody expected that. But it at least is an indication that perhaps what we call great health care isn't so great because it's well known that people in the lower income brackets supposedly don't get the best health care. Perhaps that health care isn't increasing lifespan, maybe it's decreasing it. So why is there so much confusion? I think there's a lot of reasons. One reason is that, especially when it concerns diet, I'm asked, is this diet good, is that diet good? I think that any change in traditional American eating habits will lead to improvement. <laughs> so it, it doesn't matter, you know, when you're, when you're saying, is this a good diet compared to what? I mean, compared to what you started out with, it's absolutely wonderful. But is it optimal? Well, probably not. Another reason is that medicine is controlled by corporations. I think the latest statistic was 73% of all published studies in medical journals are financed by the pharmaceutical industry, and their motive is wealth and not health. So there is a direct antagonism between the two. The two do not correlate. But the primary reason I think there's so much confusion is that nobody knows, or at least everybody has, a different definition of health. And so you're going to find a thousand different ways to be healthy because everybody is giving you a thousand different destinations. And actually, nobody really knows what health is. It's never been defined. And there's a million books and, and articles on how to be healthy, and they have absolutely no problem not defining it and giving you directions to an unknown destination. No wonder we're lost. Now, my purpose here, actually, is probably going to be to confuse you even more. But that's a step in the right direction, because I think I have to break long-held beliefs in health. And then we can start over. And sometimes the best way, when things are that confusing, it means something is basically wrong, just erase the blackboard. And we'll start over. I help diabetics by lowering their insulin, not increasing it, to reduce blood sugar. I take people off of their statin cholesterol-lowering drugs to improve heart function. I put people on what's considered a high-fat diet so that they can lose weight really fat. I take my patients off of additional calcium supplementation to improve their bone strength. Are you confused yet? No. Well, I don't have time to go into this in detail, <laughs> but in short, one, diabetes is not a disease of blood sugar. It is a disease of insulin signaling. If you're in a smelly room for a long time, pretty soon you can't smell it. If you're constantly exposed to insulin, pretty soon your cells can't smell it. That is the vast majority of diabetics. Their cells have plenty of insulin, they just can't smell it. Walk out of the room and you can smell it again. Keep your insulin low, your cells become reaccustomed to insulin, and they do much better. Cholesterol. Cholesterol is required by all life on Earth. There is no cell membrane on Earth that can exist without cholesterol. Taking cholesterol away to reduce your risk of